as we mentioned before, during the liturgical calendar, uh, we're very serious about the seasons that we're in, ordinary, Christmas, Easter, and now Advent. So those readings are formulated to reflect Advent. But as time is, and the calendar is different than the liturgical calendar, we also commemorate different saints during the season. And today we commemorate St. John of the Cross. Now, you, you probably don't know a lot about John of the Cross, although he's very important in theology of the church. You know St. Therese of Avila, not, not Lisieux, St. Therese of Avila, who is a Spanish mystic saint. And she and John of the Cross were buddies. They were, they were good friends. As a matter of fact, he became the spiritual director of her convent, one of her convents. And I'm giving you a little background because, you know, things have not always been peaceful and calm in the church. We are a church of people, humanity, and we make mistakes and we, we commit sin and we go forward and we have competition because we're people, not because we're the church, but the church is made of people who are sinful. So the story is that John of the Cross followed um, Therese of Avila and he was very dedicated. He became a Carmelite monk. Now, Carmelites are a religious order founded in, to honor Our Lady of Mount Carmel in, in the Holy Land originally. And the Carmelites that Trace of Avila joined were very serious about their monastic community calling. They, they sacrificed a lot. They endured a great deal of sufferings, mortification. They fasted a lot, and they became very devoted. Well, in the course of time, some, like, again, we're people, some of the Carmelites said, oh, this, this is too much for me. I, you know, walk around without shoes and, and fast and don't eat meats since from a great part of the year. And, you know, and they said, mm, we don't like this. We're going we're gonna to re change the order, make it a little lighter. Well, some, and there's nothing wrong with that, some, some of the Carmelites stayed in that philosophy of lightening the load. Therese did not. She founded the Discalced Carmelites, with that the word means is shoeless Carmelites. So hers was a more severe community. Again, the philosophy and theology was, as you sacrifice here on earth, you're preparing your way for heaven. Um, we use in common parlance, no pain, no gain. Well, they didn't use that phrase, but that was basically the theology of the Spanish 16th century church, post-inquisition church. So they were going through a, a renewal because uh, so, so many parts of the church in Europe had been dissolved and went over to the Protestants. So they were renewing during this period of reforming, reformation. In comes John of the Cross, who was a very educated guy, a uh, nice guy, uh, devoted to his order, eventually joins the Carmelites and realizes mm, they're a little lighthearted. Come on, for this period of, of our civilization, we should be more earnestly involved with God and sacrifice and, and so on. Gets in touch with Teresa of Avila, they become good friends, and he takes on his own, her version of the Discalced Carmelites. Again, shoeless, that's the key to remember. Shoeless Carmelites, indicating great sacrifice, great mortification, and things that I have to say are, are not popular today, generally in the church, but in certain religious orders, very popular. Now, in the course of his spirituality and his growth, he's also a very intellectual person. He's an author. He writes about his spirituality. There's one beautiful um, book that 
that is referred to as Dark Night of the Soul. There's other books about the, the heavenly kingdoms. And all of his books have a lot to do with great spirituality and unity. Unity of the author's soul with God's soul. So our unity to, with God. Now, I think we can understand that, but the, the mortification, the lessening of the need of the body enlightened the con spiritual connection between him and God. That's why fasting was so important. Walking without shoes was important. Sacrificing the body and the body needs in order to develop a greater spirituality with God. And that is still a Christian practice, mortification and unity with God. Well, his brother Carmelites didn't like that. And the Carmelites at that point in Spain were a political entity as well as a religious entity. Don't mix church and state. That, they always get you in trouble. Okay? So they imprisoned him for a period of time just to keep him out of the public eye and stop his, his theology. And in prison, he wrote some of the most beautiful sermons, books, and letters because one of the guards at the prison used to slip him paper under the door. So here it is, a guy imprisoned for his values, very strict values, spiritual values, really connecting himself to God. And he's restricted from the world because of his brothers and, and comrades, the other Carmelites. So you figure, wow, you know, we, we have a good church and we're talking to someone before Mass and the church has changed. You don't know how much the church has changed. And you don't, I shouldn't say you don't, sometimes we forget on how many ups and downs as a church we've had. And it's almost spooky, it's almost frightening because the church has been through hell and back. But the consistency of the church, we always remember, is Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is always with us. We try to get over on the Holy Spirit. We try to run things our way. And the Holy Spirit, no. He, the Holy Spirit will run the church according to the will of God. Sometimes we adapt to that and we're wise. Sometimes we rebel against that and we're outsiders. Now, it's funny because he was such a spiritual person, there were two artistic things associated with him that I want to include. He was in the balcony of his church once, in the monastery, praying. And he looked down, up, like that cross back there, if you were up there looking at it, you'd see it from behind, from above. That image was sketched. He was an artist as well, and this guy's full of talent. He sketched this image that you and I know as the cross of St. John of the Cross done by Salvatore Dali. And it's at the Modern Art Museum. And there are many reproductions of it. It's the Christ looking from above, above his head. And that cross is called the cross of St. John of the Cross. The painting represents him. He drew that in his spiritual and mystical experience. And we still have a sketch of that drawing. Another artistic inclusion I want to mention is the monastery in which he was imprisoned by his fellow monks was painted by El Greco, a great Spanish artist who's called the Greek, El Greco, and he painted that beautiful monastery with his wild hills and sky, skyline. Again, not as something dedicated to St. John of the Cross, but it was, be, it was because it was part of the Spanish topography. Now you say, what does all that have to do with Advent? Everything. 
Because in the scriptures today, Zephaniah is telling the people, get your act together because I'm going to cleanse this place up and I will have, what the Italians say, poche ma buoni, few but good to follow me. So the few are going to be called the remnant because you don't, God, through Zephaniah, talking to the people of Israel, you don't appreciate me. So you're going to be outsiders. I want you to observe. I want you to pray. I want you to keep this, the covenant. And because you don't, because you don't hear my voice and you don't accept my, my, my doctrine, doctrines, I will change and purify the people. And really what he's saying is, I will get rid of a lot of you. And those who would be left are going to be a remnant, a little section. I always use my vestment as a remnant because my mother was a, a sewer. And she made a lot, not this one, but she made a lot of my vestments. And often there'd be a piece left of the vestment and she'd want to match it maybe with a trim or this. So she called that piece a remnant. I'm going to take a remnant and go to the, 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 the fabric store and match it for further decoration. So a remnant is always stuck with me because of that. But now you, we realize a remnant is a little piece of a great picture. So God, and think John of the Cross as well, God is saying to his people, come on, get together. Follow your rules. Follow the word Jesus. Follow the charity and love that all of us need to be members of as the body of Christ. And get rid of all the extraneous stuff. John of the Cross took that very seriously. So he really, again, and, and the Discalced um, communities took it very seriously. They got rid of all the extraneous. They fasted from, from a Feast of the Holy Cross, which is September, through Easter, which means bread once a day and, and water and no other food. That's a little crazy, you would think. But they were purifying themselves. Now, we don't have to do that. You sacrifice in many ways, all of us do in many other ways. But the idea, we're going to be a remnant, a small church. Benedict XVI said, we're going to be a smaller but greater church because of the sacrifices we are going through in the 20th and 21st centuries. All I can do is hold on to hope and encourage ourselves to hold on to Jesus who always reaches out to us and through the saints connects with us historically and spiritually.